Thrash City tries his best to cite his sources. All research done in preparation to this session is available in the reference link in the description. Dive deeper into the sources to view the information firsthand. Merca, land of the free, home of the Brisave. The only country in the world where football is no longer football because we turn football into football. But what really went down? What events led up to Merca as we know it today? Well, we finna find out. What's happening? It's your history tutor, Thrash City. He just teach y'all about American history. The Street. First Settlers Part 1. A long time ago, there was a land bridge that connected America to Europe. This allowed people to walk from over here all the way to over here, right? Now, another long time ago, don't ask me what year because I don't even know, the land bridge faded and this prevented people from walking across. So the only way you could get across is if you had like a boat or a ship or something. And you know what I'm saying? Back then they thought the earth was flat, so nobody was trying to go nowhere to tell you the truth. Now everybody knows that the Europeans traveled by sea to reach America, eventually. But the question is, why don't we ever talk about the history of the natives, the indigenous people who were in America before they arrived? That's because they have little to no written history from them about them. Even the Cherokee, one of the only Native Americans to have a written language, were also known to pass their heritages and their traditions down by word of mouth, storytelling, folklore. Now you know we can't take storytelling and folklore for truth. You already know how that looks. I hop out, I start shooting. Bow, 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 bow. Shot the Bow, shot the Bow, 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 bow. But I still got you. If you'd like to hear some ancient myths and stories about the Cherokee from some of their histories, go ahead and check reference number two. But for the first few sessions, we're going to cover the voyages, adventures, and sagas of explorers who made it to America before Columbus did in 1492, starting with St. Brandon. St. Brandon was an Irishman from the 5th century who also happened to be an abbot. Now what's the abbot? For all of y'all that don't know, it's only the OG monk of the century. So yeah, he was pretty much running now one thing to consider is that this tale originates from the ancient Latin language. So it's been translated so many times throughout the years, this, you know, probably contorted. The, the tale's probably like, you know, lost in translation a little bit. So take this as you will. St. Brandon was born in Kerry, Ireland in the year 484. And his birth was one of the most lady births ever. It said that when he was born, a fucking forest fire started. Bro, he came out the womb spitting flames. I'm liking this story already, oh God. So we all know St. Brandon is a religious dude, you feel me? He's an abbot. He's the OG monk of the century. So the reason for his travels, so like, you know what I'm saying, why would he go from Ireland to the Americas? But he asked God to show him heaven and hell before he died. I don't get it, but all right, yeah. So pretty much what he embarked on was what they call a pilgrimage of the soul with the ultimate goal of reaching paradise from what I'm told. <laughs> Hashtag Mars, bro, a little fire for you. Anyways, this seven year voyage took place in a, in a rowboat, right? Of all things, a rowboat with like 15 of his other homies and uh, he encountered a bunch of different events like crazy shit that happened on his way to America. And they took note of him. They had a pillar of ice that appeared out of nowhere, which I'm pretty sure is glaciers. They had a big fish that took their boat on a ride a couple times, which we're pretty sure are just whales. And they also had molten rock appear out of nowhere, which they thought was hell, but we're pretty sure that those are just volcanoes in the ocean. You feel me? So they seen even more crazy Like, they had Birds coming from the sky telling them that, hey, yo, we really angels. We ain't really birds, though. For real, for real. They had uh, fire-breathing sea serpents. They had the devil come and yeet one of his homies off the boat. They had um, a, a, a sky battle between a griffin and a dragon. They even claimed they seen Judas on a rock stranded in the middle of the ocean crying butt naked. So, um, I guess you could see why they called us a legend. So regardless of if this really happened or not, it did spark the question, is this even possible? 
can you for real, for real make it to America from Ireland in a rowboat? In May 1976, Tim Severn took he and his crew on a small rowboat from Ireland to Newfoundland in a matter of 13 months. For real, for real. It was thought to be impossible for people with that type of technology to traverse that far within, you know, their lifetime, but homie thugged it out and made it happen in 13 months. And in doing that, he squashed all the, oh, maybe they did it, oh, they probably got there. The, all the people that were kind of iffy about it, they're like, eh, no, he crushed all that. He's like, yo, this motherfucker straight up rode his, his boat over there the same way I did. So it's in the books. He's talking about whales and glaciers and shit. I ain't see Judas on the way, I ain't gonna lie. But he was like, yo, this it could have really happened. So there you have it. St. Brandon, the Abbey, the GOAT. He didn't go across America because he wanted the fame or whatever else. Like he legit just went over there because because God told him. You know what I'm saying? He was being mad extra before he died. So this is the oldest documented reference that I have in regard to travel from Europe to America. If you know something older or something I don't know about St. Brandon, go ahead, comment it down in the comment section below. You feel me? I want to learn some too. That's it for this episode of Learn with Thrash City, American History. This has been the first part of the first settlers. I'll see you next week when we go over the next settler who landed in America before Columbus did. Stay up, keep grinding. Stainless Steel Beats.